been a set designer, a costume designer, a lighting designer, a director. Uh, he's been a theater consultant, a designer of spaces. Uh, he worked with Peter Burke for over 25 years in, as a set and space designer, creating spaces in over 200 countries, uh, transforming them throughout the world, uh, including spaces such as La Mama in New York, the tramway in Glasgow, the gaswork in Copenhagen, the Mercat de la Fleur in Barcelona, National Theatre in Strasbourg, and the uh, Bockenheimer Depot in Frankfurt. He also was the theatre consultant for the Abbey Theatre in Dublin and the New Young Vic in London. And his design work uh, as a sonographer is in theatre, opera, and dance, so he's really well-rounded, and he will tell you more. 200. Okay. <laughs> so I will let Jean Yi take it from here. Um, <laughs> that's something absolutely stupid in the opera. We have thought before it starts. <laughs> <laughs> like this, it's okay? Yeah. I'm not Italian, but I can project. <laughs> This is a school in Afghanistan bomb the day before. And the girls came back to the school because, of course, the knowledge is in a school, not on the side of the school. But they miss to leave a space for the teacher. And the theater is exactly the opposite. We don't need a space to do theater. This is why I'm going to show you a lot of space. And then we can think about do we need or not, why we need a space. We just talk with this charming French girl here. She's French. <laughs> uh, is the costume more important than the set? Of course. We, we need an idea, we need text, we need an audience, we need a costume, because if you play nude, you tell something that have a sense. We need light, but we don't necessarily need a set, but we need a space. Space doesn't mean necessarily a theater, but space is where actors uh, can meet the audience. And this is very important because Many theater maybe doesn't do that thing we need, which is this very intimate meeting between the play and the audience. So this is why with Peter Brook we thought we have to respect the work we have done for two months during the real soul. And if the wall are not in the right place, the wall have to move not our work. And most of the time when the company are touring, they destroy their work to put their show inside of the theater who is not on a good size. So there is a lot of possibilities, not necessarily complicated and expensive, to have to adjust the show to the space and not to adjust, <coughs> not to adjust the space to the show, sorry and not to do the opposite. So, <coughs> we can imagine this. 
we eliminate it, we have exactly what we need. Silence in the middle of nothing and the relation we choose to have. After, if it's rain, we put a roof. After, if there is a sound outside, we close the space. Then we have a theater. So, <coughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good. Can you see me? I can see you. I can't hear you very well. So this is a minimum organization we need to see the show. The, the, these people organize themselves. And uh, this is the base. How can we organize the human being with somebody who is talking? This is the story of a theater. There is no history of a theater. There is 1,000 years without theater. So this uh, question of have the right relationship between the audience and the artist start by watching how the audience should be first and not the opposite. Yeah. So from the first image we have this Greek theater, very simple, circle, a hill, we put stone, people sit, we have the space. Yes. And the next and you see the first image we do here, and we have exactly the absolutely natural relationship. All the theater, even this one, come from that form. And in this theater, this form is here. to find a way to work together. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> the mouse is behind you, so you don't see me, how can we do? You know, very sophisticated theater. And then the minimum dialogue cannot work. I'm going to turn your mic up. So if I do this, <laughs> you go to the next. If I do this, you do nothing. Okay. Huh? The right arm. <laughs> Go. Okay. <coughs> because we have just one hour, so we have to go very quickly. So, this is uh, the Senate in Rome, same form. Yes. From the Roman, from the Greek to the Roman, the same form except slowly we build wall around to be protected by sound. The Roman theater are in a city. The Greek theater were in the countryside. This is a theater in, in France where we have this huge wall created for the acoustic. And then we have this theater on, on the right side. <coughs> well, no, it's not that. Can you come back? Because I changed all the photos because some of you have seen some presentation yesterday or before yesterday, so I do something different, so maybe there is some mistake. Uh, on the right side, we have the same theater with a roof, and if we open the door, we have this proscenium theater. The artist, for the first time, move inside of the stage. And that gave a lot of space. You know this one. So, we come back to the, the image. <coughs> What's happened? Back again? You sure you are in the right direction? Yeah. Next. Next. Yeah, so we open this Roman theater, we create a window, and this is why I call it a window, because 
behind that proscenium arch, at a certain distance, you lost the relationship, you lost the correct presence uh, with the audience. So slowly, the artists are moving inside of the stage, and we have all that uh, formal theater, very rigid in the 17th, 18th century. <laughs> Where they build the uh, set, uh, set and the perspective, and then they cannot play on, on stage because they are very quickly higher than the set, so they play in front. But uh, there is two space, but that, at that period, the two space were unified because the aesthetic on stage and in the house and the costume were the same. Today we have 2,500 repertory, and we don't have sometimes this unity. We can have a classical play with a classical costume here in a modern house. And we have this movement who continue until the 50s, where we even take out set, we use the stage empty, and then the artists are completely in another room. So now I, I jump very quickly to the theater of Peter Brook, because in Paris, we use this abandoned place and we connect these two forms from the Greek and Elizabethan, which is the same form, and the proscenium arch theater. And that's a unique form at that time uh, done like that. This is the theater as it was. This is what we did. And this is the first play, and there is no stage behind. So this is why we did that. After we extend the stage, but we play in front of the original stage, in the middle of the audience, the energy of the Elizabethan theater, the actor in the middle of the audience. <coughs> this is theater today. I don't understand the order, but this is a, uh, that, uh, that photo, this is a big play we did in Mahabharata, where we can see this two space. And there is a bit of form in front, and everything behind the person you march will look far away. And because the theater is abandoned, there is some kind of color on the balcony where the, the gold and the red have disappeared. And the color of the balcony here is almost the same value than the, the audience, like this gray seats here. So there is a unity between the balconies. So this is uh, now the, the theater where you can s can you go further because there is a b uh, okay so because the theater is not restored when we need a window we make windows hmm. when we need to paint the wall we paint the wall we make a doors or you eliminate the doors <coughs> and that's what well, will be not possible if we restore the theater and this is a permanent set we can say for Peter Brook. Later on, we paint the back wall. Okay. We can have modern ideas just to project windows, for instance. Okay. Yes. And then we move seats. We have this flexibility. We can change the configuration and play 
on the stage as it was in the past. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So from that theater, we quite be sure we to do the tour. We need to find a place without to have to build a set which has not the same characteristics, it's impossible, but the same quality. So this is uh, one theater in Caracas. It was abandoned and transformed to a garage and we transform it again to the theater. So you see the minimum of the theater today, it's exactly like the Greek theater. This is uh, the Ave Theater in New York. Uh, the same idea, we, we were searching a space who have the same quality and we find an abandoned theater which was used by the Mormon and we do not uh, want to restore it and nobody has the money to restore it. We just keep as it was. And uh, like that, and we move the stage up one meter, three feet. We connect to the balcony and we play one year at that theater. And they don't want to restart it after, they are still using as it is. This is the theater 2000 seats uh, before. This is a project. I did, I cut the second balcony by half, move the stage three feet, and use under balcony as a lobby <coughs> where the seats were. We pan the back wall and then we to unify the whole theater. I didn't use bench. I, I build uh, seats, I build a bench to have this long line who create more intimacy. When you have single seats, the space looks bigger. So we can also change the configuration, have more intimacy, like here, and close the back. This is uh, an, an opera, they build a stage, and then they use uh, the stage I built to put orchestra. <laughs> uh, they renovated the theater 10 years ago. They do single seats, but they keep this back line because they ask me if, if uh, I agree by changing the seats, but I, I, ju I say okay, but keep this back line to have the intimacy. This is Rome. Another way to use uh, a theater <coughs> is to not use a stage and do everything here. Close the stage and play in the center. We cover the seats, we keep the seats, but we cover it. And we did that with the artist in the middle of the theater. And we unify the hall with the colors, the sand like the balcony and the seats who have also cushions with the carpet, same color like the balconies. We did that in Hamburg. This theater was much too big, much too rich, so we finished it in the same way. And this is a small theater in Italy. They transformed to a cinema. Behind the screen, there is a little road with the administration, and I take out the screen and the wall to support the screen, and I use the house behind as a set. <coughs> so 
where this is in Madrid, another theater, same idea. And always to try to unify the whole thing by choosing the right colors. And with the carpet. And, and this is uh, in Japan, a theater they want to build. But we don't want to use as it is because it's a long corridor. So inside of the theater, we build another theater. So you see there is a new seats, new wall on the back, new ceiling, new wall on stage. And that's the theater we did. Much smaller, more or less same quantity of, of audience, but we have people on the side, around the stage. This is a Tempest. This is a Mabarata. This is a theater in Anvers, the De Single. The stage is much too low, and they, want, they have to build a platform for the piano. So we, we change the completely the seats. In be, we don't touch the seats, but in between the seats, because to take out seats is always too expensive and too complicated. So if we keep always the seats, and we deal with seats. This is a different one way. When we do not have theater, we transform a space. And this is a, a covent. And this is a cluster of the covent transformed to a factory and a garage in the 19th century. And I transformed to theater. And it's a permanent theater now. That's a second play we did in it. This is the audience, and this is the theater today. It's, now it's rent for company for many different purposes. This is a gas container. So you see, we can do theater everywhere. That building we are supposed to be destroyed, like the factory around, <coughs> and we transform it, and it's now a permanent theater. It's a beautiful ceiling in wood. And the, the container were inside of this building, going up and down for the gas. And uh, we, we, we close the hole with the purse, and we build the seats, and they're still there and uh, they build a dressing room and uh, all the facilities for the audience outside. There is an acoustic ceiling to help. This is a Carmen. And this is a Mabata with a wall I paint in red. That's a boat place where there is a boat in Zurich. We transform completely the metallic uh, aesthetic and acoustic. We put wood everywhere. And in the morning, we open this huge door at 7 o'clock, the show was 9 hours long, and there was the sun right in the middle of the, of the door. It was a beautiful end. This is a place in, in uh, Barcelona, <coughs> a warehouse, one of the first buildings in the world with uh, glue wood. You know what it is? And, uh, but was abandoned, so we transform it, and now it's a permanent place for dance. That was the first 
So we just have seats. And then we came back with a show bigger and we paint the walls. And after, after we have done that two shows, they give it to an architect and they transform the space to that kind of factory where the aesthetic of the building disappear. There is a business class seat, things like that. So they asked me to come back and then to retransform the space. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's what we are going to do for this a dance company, we can push seats, have the rehearsal room, divide the, the building in two parts to have two different shows. This is a cinema studio in Madrid. Uh, most of the American Western were done in Spain, were shot in Spain because it was much cheaper and there is no union. They built this studio in near Madrid and this studio were on the way to be destroyed to build a house. So we opened the door in between these two studios. We connect the two studios, we play here and now there is a Spanish TV inside of this building. We save the building. This is an army manège where the soldiers rear on the horses <coughs> and we transform it, but that's one of the space we have to build the set because the building has not a good proportion. The ceiling is too low, so we have to reduce the, the building to make it not wide as it is to have a better proportion. See, the, the whole thing is less white, and we have a square form. This is a set for the Tempête of Shakespeare. Now there is a series of sets I want to show you where I try most of the time to have a, a fixed set with a very minimum of transformation to not have that long moment, especially in opera where we have to jump from one side to another one. <coughs> this is a paper set. I did that for ballet. It, the idea was to have this cold atmosphere because the ballet were uh, called Himalaya, the mountain, and uh, they have no money, so I have a, a paper for free in Montreal, and I did this to have this cold atmosphere. When the light moved down, we have also this suggestion of the rocks. That's another set in paper in Korea for Antigon. Uh, there is a little fan behind the set, and the paper moved very, very, very slowly. The, the idea was uh, the kingdom where this rectangular f f four and uh, the paper gives the idea of freedom Antigone is looking for. But we can use the paper. The, the, the king is furious, can use the paper. <coughs> You see, the, sometimes the paper move more. That's another set, paper set for a different production in Korea. This is uh, Prague, a meeting in Prague. Unfortunately, half of this building uh, disappeared in flames. 
But that year, we make a, a theater inside with a cardboard box. Because there is not a lot of money for students to have a small theater where they can present five, six shows a day. I suggest to do this theater with a cardboard box. We can give back to the company after. And then we don't, we don't have to pay for it. And then inside of the box, I put a fiberglass to make the box heavy, to have a good acoustic inside and a good barrier from the sound from outside. That's the entrance, one of the entrance. And then I show you photos where you can see inside of this theater, there is all these galleries where we can sit, but also where we can use for the light. And because of the quality of the atmosphere done by the cardboard, nobody wants to mask it with a black curtain. It's like a, a Greek temple with big stone. This is a famous consultant who make a lot of theater in America. So you can see we can use as a real theater where the artist. So this is Titus Andronicus. Uh, the audience were on two lines, and then we create that fighting between Tamora and Titus. Uh, they, they have their own space, both sides, and in the center, the actor creates their own space. This small island to suggest Titus and the daughter rape with a tongue cut. They're completely lost, and they are isolated from the whole kingdom they, they have before. And this is, this uh, space is like a road. This is the Tamara side, very aggressive. And this is the Titus side, where with a shadow you can have a prison, a forest, or an entrance. Uh, in Dublin, we discovered under the church the first theater in Dublin from probably end of 16th century. And uh, we did that play from uh, Shakespeare, We Don't Tell the World. And I find in the factory uh, the trash of a mirror. And we have that for free. And I continue the wall with that mirror, and, and the mirror were like a piece of uh, stone, more or less the same form. And watching like this, we do not see there is a platform from where the witches and other person can appear. And this is uh, architecture. It's a big theater, he built National Theater in Barcelona by Ricardo Bofill. And there is a very bad connection between the stage and, and the house. So I covered the first part of the, of the theater and I create on the back of the set a limit just by having bamboos. And uh, on the stage, just a stick can create a limit. So this is this huge stage. The actor comes from the street, from the back of the stage, and they, st they start by fixing bamboo on the stage. 
Ah. That's bizarre. Let's see the next one. Yeah. And this is the play. So this uh, the Titus from Mozart, the Clemence of Titus, uh, the same. I try to have just a fixed set and change the different scene by having a curtain, a transparency. Ah, it's mixed up. So that's the base when we are, we are setting the set. Let's see the next one. And that's a, the room. So just a curtain up here and the bed. We are in the 30s. Then we see behind, more or less, and the chorus will come. Because it's uh, in, a set, in the opera, always a big problem when 50 people have to come on stage. So they are the chorus, heavy, and then they go away. <laughs> so it's better to bring them on stage and then to light them, disappear in the darkness. That's what it is. <laughs> this is a festival, a Merida festival. That was a capital of the Roman Occidental part of the empire. And they do a festival here. So I try to isolate the space because that space is much too big. And they suggest to light from far away. And I, I build a scaffolding both sides. And I, I really create a small theater inside of this huge universe. With a very geometric form to be completely different from the context. This is in Madrid, the slaughterhouse. They asked me to transform this free space one in uh, <coughs> one would be the lobby, the second one theater, the third one the small theater, the administration dressing room, rehearsal room, and I suggest to connect the three building with the scaffolding, the temporary scaffolding, which will be for forever, forever. But the idea of temporary. Uh, the, the government, Spain government, like it because they think it will be cheaper. <laughs> so they restore the building outside. They keep the building inside as it was. And I connect the building with the scaffolding. This is the first performance. I did a set. Margoni Brecht Opera. That's a place for the orchestra. We unclose them because of the light. And this is a prostitute house both on the other side to create equilibrium with the orchestra and the <coughs> house. So to not have a change between the scene, I usually try to transform the props. Here is a billard, and the billard became a boat, and the boat became a justice table. This is the theater in, in Lisbon. We try to have a fixed theater, good acoustic, good visibility, and a very big stage to be able to create on stage different form. So you see there is no straight line, that's a postmodern architecture. 
but we are trying to inside to have something completely different. So we have the same aesthetic on the wall of the house or on stage. So we can close the stage and we have another theater on the stage. And the, the audience can go directly from the lobby to the stage. This is the roundhouse. <coughs> we transform the roundhouse to be able to receive circus, the uh, Royal Shakespeare Company, who come mo most of the year, two, three months every year, dance, uh, uh, music. We, we can have a rock concert for 2,000 uh, spectators. And in the basement, there is a little room where the kids who live near the roundhouse can come for free to learn cinema, theater, uh, old kind of music, how to compose, etc. And the money they get on the first floor, it's on the second floor, it's used on the first floor to pay for all of that activities. So to not touch the building, we add something outside for the cafeteria, dressing room, etc. And here we can see we, we don't want to imitate the past. Today is today, yesterday is yesterday. The only way to share the modernity of today and the past is through the beauty, the quality of the construction. This is the theater we built uh, and we opened it uh, last year in New York, in Brooklyn. Near the other theater I have transformed uh, 20 years ago. And that uh, theater is consecrated mostly to Shakespeare. And uh, we try to have the proportion of one theater who exists in London called the Cotslow. But the proportion of the Cotslow is not uh, perfect. So we change a little the relationship between the, the audience and, and the stage. And we have in that theater 14 possibility to organize seats. So this is the theater, the stage, the stage can go away. <coughs> they can close the theater and play on that part of the stage. There is a lot of possibility to have a, a contemporary uh, Shakespeare today or to have a Shakespeare classical like in the Rondau, like in the Globe with, with the Elizabethan form. This is the first production. It was uh, King Lear. This is uh, La Mama Theater. <coughs> a theater opened by Ellen Stewart a long time ago, something like 50 years ago, so more or less. And next Monday, I have a meeting with the architect. We are going to renovate uh, that theater which will be a challenge to keep the spirit, keep the atmosphere, but do something of today. Theater is today. So it's probably the end of the presentation. I don't know what time is it? It's uh, about seven minutes of six. Do you want to ask for questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, I was going to ask, uh, so, in the earlier years in the earlier that you worked on, um, particularly like the Harvey at um, in New York, um, when you originally changed the configuration of those theaters, was 
for a particular production, did you intend for it to be permanent or was it? No, we, we, we never think about permanent ID, but I always think about the possibility for, you know, because of the name of Peter Brook, because the size of the production, because this, because that, you have a possibility to rehabilitate a space. I don't think it's, uh, it's uh, interesting to do it just for one person. And the money is a key for everybody. So if we can think about the future and inside of the form we are transforming or we are creating, to think about all the other companies who can come. And in that way, it's very interesting because we discovered that form is very useful for everybody. A young company who have no set it's perfect because the space is not dead, it's not black box. So you don't need a set. You don't have money to have a set, you can play there. You have a set, you can have a set. The, the, the space, if your set is good, of course, because the space could reject your bad work. But uh, there is a lot of possibilities and I think when we have some money to do something, we have to think about uh, that question to help all generation in the future. This is why when I transform a gas container, I don't transform just for Peter Brook. I think about the proportions that it can be used after, and, and that's what's happened. So th there is a tramway, there is, there is uh, many spaces like that who were supposed to be destroyed. In Frankfurt, there is a William Forsyth inside of the space, and, and it works for him, etc. So I think that's very important. Can you tell us the process of working with Peter Brook? Do you do drawings for him, or is it discussion, mm. or models, well, or how do you work with him? Um, it's very simple. When I start working with him, it was a bicentennial here in America, and the French government offered to America, not the president or politician, the French government offered the artist. So for one year, in 1976, there is filmmakers, writers, theater people touring all around America. Peter Brook was one of these companies. And he asked me to help him to search space in, in, because the tour we were supposed to, and most of the tour in this country are the tour of the universities. So I visit many cities and many spaces and I organized that tour. I was engaged for six months and I stayed 25 years. <laughs> <coughs> when I asked Peter Brook, what do you want? I don't, I, I never work with you, so I see your first production, but that's the only thing I know from you, I know your reputation, of course, but I don't know how, what you are looking for. And he said, I am either don't know what I am looking for, because we have this theater in Paris, this is the first time we are going outside, we have to improvise. You will recognize the space we need. You will recognize it. And this is a beautiful world, I think, because when we are working with actors on stage where we are, we recognize when it's right. We recognize when it's not right. I think that world, to recognize what we need, what we are looking for, is it's something very important. So this is more or less the way I'm working with Peter Brook. We, we never made a model, we never made we make sometimes a little sketch on his carnet, that's, <laughs> but that's it. And uh, sometimes he showed me some sketch, but it was always outside of proportions, outside <laughs> the size of the good size. But it doesn't matter. The most important is to understand what that man was seeking about because it was, that's why we need set design. My job to translate in the form is mining. 
so it was a very interesting exchange permanently because most of the time I have to search a space before the production exists. We need to have partner in Tokyo, in Zurich, in New York, to have a money to, to produce a new performance. So I have to go to see Peter Brook and I said, what are you going to do? And he always said, I don't know. <laughs> because he doesn't prepare the direction on some director are doing that and on the text that the actor are moving from the coach. Everybody starts the same day and we search. So I have to ask him questions about how big it will be, which color it will be, what kind of atmosphere, and with that, maybe 10 words to travel and to try to find a place who maybe two years later will be right, should be right. <coughs> So I think we, we are not set design, costume design, light design, props person, we are a partner. We are sharing the same idea. If we do not understand each other, it's better to not work together. Yes? As a renaissance man within theatrical design, what advice do you have for young designers who are interested in all forms of design. If for, I'm interested about What was that? Yeah, what advice do you have for young designers who are interested in but all aspects of design? But what means young design? For any designer. Yeah. Uh, who are interested in all aspects of design, from scenic design, to lighting design, to like... No, the I'm not, no not at all. I'm interested in what is necessary that day in that city with this company. Sa question, en fait, c'est les jeunes d'aujourd'hui, c'est quoi vos conseils pour les jeunes d'aujourd'hui pour attaquer... No, but that's, that's what design. it is. Ah. There is no young design and old design. There is a theater and a theater together. For you and for me. Jeune dans le sens de l'âge, je pense. No, 18 ans. I have nothing to do. One, one time, I was in conference. And there is three students who come to talk to me. And they said, they asked me a lot of questions about the future, about their work, about my experience. And once I said, you artist, to these three girls. And they react and say, why you call us artist? We are in school. And I told them, if you are not artist, the school is not going to transform you to be an artist. If you are not, go immediately to work in the bank. <laughs> you know, it's very important. The school can help you to develop your technique, your idea, your meaning, but they cannot transform you as an artist. You have not a different eyes. You are not watching the world differently than me. I don't need you. No, so there is not young and old people. There is no progress in the art. The, 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 the painting in the cave 10,000 years ago were good or bad. But there is no progress from that time to today. The art has this specific city to be outside of the movement. The artist opened their eyes to the audience in a different way. This is the way I see the world. And this is what interests me as a spectator. You are young or you are not young. You have this ability and capacity to do that, to remove me, to make me crying. Yes, you are an artist. But you are not a young artist or an old artist. What do you think, you, your yeah. artist? Um, some of the things you were talking about to our students in our class was the relationship between the actors and the audience, which is very important, obviously. Can you speak a little bit about that relationship? I noticed a lot of the theatres who took away the raised stage and frame. Can you talk a little bit about that? So. 
I don't work just with Peter Brook, of course. I, I, I work with Beckett, with many people before Living Theater. I was stage manager of Living Theater. And I joined the company of Peter Brook, and now I'm freelance for 15 years. But I try to keep <coughs> something I learned before to meet Peter Brook, which is the play should be one. One thing. There is no something more important. There is some accent. And this is why it's very important for young person to imagine to do everything. You are going to join a young company. It's your decision. First, you have a budget a little bigger if you have only one. If, but the young company doesn't have the money to have a costume design, set design, light design, props, person, etc. It's better to take all the money and then you have this capacity to choose where you are going to spend money, more costume, maybe no set but the light. When there is a light design, costume design, and set design, we do light, we do set, and we do costume, who might be not necessary. And that's a very bad habit uh, to be in a little box. Even if you are not excellent to do a costume, you should try. If you are not excellent to do set, you should try. Because less you are in a company, better it is. We, we never be more than 14 people, include the actors, in the Peterborough company. Over, over, over that size, we don't understand each other. We do not listen to each other. The information doesn't go through. And <laughs> it's difficult to work together. When we start to do a show, the first day, I remember uh, Jean Calman, the famous light designer who worked with us some time, and is working a lot of time with Deborah Werner, the direct, English director. And one time, Peter Brook asked him, uh, do you want to work with this, with this show? There is a lot of company working like that. The first day of the rehearsal, we are all starting on the same line. We read the text, and after a certain period, we start to think about the form. But we search first the idea. So to develop the idea, I put on the stage everything I can find, costume, fabrics, steps, doors, anything can be used by the actors. And they improvise. And slowly I see what they are using, and I eliminate slowly something we were not used for 10 days, for instance. And then we have the prefiguration of the form. Arrives a moment where I have to tell the director, now we have, because in France we have this extraordinary chance to have the real soul during two months. There are very few countries who can do that. So I have to say now we have four or five weeks before the premiere. We have to think about costume and construction, if we want to have construction. Because well, that's the time we need to build, find the, the constructor, the builder, and to paint. Or maybe three weeks, it depends what we want to do. So <coughs> this is the process, same with the costume, same with the light. We try everything and we slowly build things with the actors. And when we have done that, arrives the last two weeks where we eliminate. We have for instance, make a show, a conference of the birds, beautiful poetry from the 12th century, from the Sufi poeters, where the birds are searching their, their god, and at the end of the play, they arrive in front of the mirror. <coughs> very deep and philosophical, beautiful production. The production, the first we also, when we arrived in Avignon Festival, was two hours, three days before the premiere. After the, that rehearsal, that running through, 
Peter Brook doesn't say anything. So everybody thought there is a problem. <laughs> he asked all of the company to come the day after, at 2 o'clock under the sun, we play outside, and he cut half hour of a play of two hours. So, beautiful masks, beautiful costumes, beautiful things we built. But he was right. We have to never forget what we have choose to do that and how we do that is something else. We have to keep the line. Now, if what we have done is beautiful but the play is too long, even if we have spent a lot of money to do a lot of things, we have to eliminate. And then we play it 600 times everywhere around the world. Is that the answer? the actors on stage and the audience, ah. uh, in addition to what we saw. Uh, why we transform the space? Uh, uh, because in any moment in life, there is a, a specific relation between one person and other person, one or more. And that distance is, in our life, fixed. If I come too close, I go inside of your space. If I'm too far, my presence disappears. There is a specific relation. When Hamlet eliminated everybody on stage and asked the audience, what should I do? Then the zoom have to appear. And things behind disappear. To, to be able to do that, during the rehearsal period, we have to adjust what I call the gravity center. Where is the center of energy of this play? And that we have to keep, even if we play in the center, completely different. This is why we have to transform the space. This is why we have everywhere to adjust that place. And this is something important to have everybody working together because my work was to recognize that and not Peter Brook. And uh, when we are on tour, I used to do something nobody knew. I put a cross, a little cross on, on a stage where I think the gravity center is that day in that city. When the actor comes, the actor always comes from the stage, facing the audience, watching where they are going to play. If you don't stop on my cross, I'm wrong. And I know two days later, Peter Brook will ask me to adjust the seats or to push the wall or to do something. So I prefer to know that before. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can have one more question and then we'll have to wrap up. You've mentioned a lot of repurposing with cardboard, mirrors, and... No, it was cheap. Yeah, I'm just wondering how you come about to find these. Uh, to find? But like, what if for me I don't really have contacts? Where would Me I? Me too, I don't have. So you just it was in Prague, I don't know anybody, but yeah. there is uh, yellow pages. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to... We were speaking about that this morning. We never, never should abandon it a good idea. If there is a technical problem, if there is a money problem, like this set with paper, no money, a set for $100. Just a spray to make the paper not burn. <laughs> you know, there is always a solution. But if we search, if we keep the same idea without to explore another possibility, of course it cannot work. Mm -hmm. But we never should abandon it an idea. We should explore what this idea could suggest. 
And there is, from one idea, many possibilities, many ways to say exactly what we want to say in a different form. It's just the form we have to change. The proportion, the color, the quality, the texture, the costume, etc. Everything could be adjusted because we don't have enough money, because this, because that. But we never should lose the idea. Why? Because if we lose the idea, we are going to do some kind of compromise and it became slowly a pastiche. No, when we restored a church, it's a pastiche because an artist is a creative person. An artist is, doesn't, is not an artist to imitate the past. We can learn from the past by reverse painting to see the energy, for instance. That's a way to learn. But we cannot be creative by imitating the past. An artist is a creative person. I, against the restoration, I like to preserve the past for uh, as it is. But to restore it, it's to destroy the work of the artist. There is uh, uh, an association in France against the restoration because they discovered in the Louvre. There is a painting, big painting, everybody knows, who were restored in 19th century, at the end of 19th century, were restored in the beginning of 20th century, and were rest restored again recently. And the, with a photo of this painting we have, we know there is one inch meters, square meters, from the original painting. So, that has no sense. And then you can compare. There is some part of the dress, beautiful in the original painting, will have disappeared, etc., etc. So, an artist is a creative person, dot. And on that note, we thank you so much, Jean-Guy, for...